masks for open houses. Ta-da! I am here today with Michelle talking about her Model 3. That's right. Michelle, what is your vehicle's name? Uh, I named her Zendaya, which is gratitude, um, because she was a gift to myself, so. Awesome, awesome. What occasion did you gift yourself? Well, you know, I um, had a X Matchbox car that I kept on my uh, sink um, for the first year that I was in real estate. That was my goal. So I uh, finished my first year well of full-time real estate work, and I went right out and got her, and she's, you know, the way I show my gratitude. Congratulations. What an excellent color choice. Thank you. What led you to want to buy an electric vehicle versus, say, I don't know, a Corvette or a Lexus <laughs> or a Mercedes? Um, well, I think it's the best of all worlds because I can still go fast. Um, we have been living, my husband and my family, a green lifestyle for a long time. I worked for an environmental products company in Austin, Texas many years ago. We compost, we recycle, we rainwater collection, we grow our own food, we dehydrate our food, we can our food, we make our own beer and wine, we do all the, we have bees, we have chickens. Um, and so having an electric vehicle just kind of move, moving away from fossil fuels is just part of my uh, brand, let's say. And I am a green realtor too. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. That's moving the cause forward for the entire planet. Well, you know, I don't, wouldn't go that far, but yeah. it well, makes me feel good. It's, it's an individual choice for all of us. That's a great reason to go EV for sure. Um, as far as things that you love about this car, what are some of your favorite features? What, what are you most excited about when you get in to drive? Um, oh, so many things. <laughs> uh, speed. Um, I, just, I like the idea that the three is kind of nonchalant too, because you can just be driving up on somebody and they have no idea what you are and you zip right past them. Um, I like the sound system. I like the entertainment. I like the feel of the car. I love the autopilot. Um, you know, all the things. Did you get the full self-driving? Um, I did not get the full self-driving. Actually, one night after a couple of glasses of wine, I did buy it, and my husband reminded me that that wasn't a great idea, and I, and I actually yeah, I got to roll that back, but um, I'm hoping someday. Do you think you'll try the FSD subscription to see if it's a good fit? I, maybe. I don't yeah. know. We haven't really talked about it. Right now, we don't need it. We love it just the way it is. So. Yeah. It has autopilot features even without yeah. having full self-driving. We do a lot of long trips, so um, we really like that. So it will follow the lane and keep the distance from the car in front of you, even without buying FSD. Absolutely. Um, of course, you have to engage, which I think you should anyhow. But um, on long car trips, it really takes a lot of the wear and tear off. And honestly, you know, it, it's just safer. It, everything about it is safer. Drifting, you know, alarms go off. When cars move into your lane, alarms go off. I just feel a lot more confident in it. Yeah, that's the impression a lot of people talk about, that it feels like their Tesla is aware of what's going on around it. Yeah, it probably is with all those cameras and radar. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of long trips. Yes. How often do you take long road trips? Um, I think we've taken about five or six. Um, so I've had it a year, so not that much. We had a family emergency, so we've had to go more often. We go to Texas generally, uh, outside the Houston area. Um, so we've done that maybe five times or something. So you don't take road trips often, but five times you've driven to Houston. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is a long haul for an EV if you don't really know how it works. Right. Tell us about the experience driving an EV there versus, I believe you probably do have a gas yeah, vehicle. Yeah, we still. do. Yeah, we do. Why do you choose the EV? Because um, it's a lot more comfortable because of the autopilot. Um, I mean, I'm short, so I can stretch out in the back seat and look up at the sky while, you know, while my husband or my son drives. Um, it's just more comfortable. It does add time to our trip, which is a bummer. Um, and the charging stations in some of the small towns aren't that great, and we end up spending more time than we want to doing that. But we have Netflix, so. Yeah, so even with the charging, the benefits of taking an EV are better for you. Oh, for us, absolutely. There's plenty of space for our luggage. Um, we can stretch out. The seats are super comfortable. No problem. Awesome. Awesome. What are some of the common questions you get from your non-EV owning friends, family, and acquaintances? Mm -hmm. 
because it's non because I said like I said earlier nonchalant people don't really recognize that it's EV they expect it to look weird or space age and so when they realize they'll say well where's the engine and I like to open the frunk of course and show them that it, there's no engine um, they say you know it's just real basic things like well how do you get the gas in it I'm like we don't need gas you know um, you know how much did it cost that's the big thing Everybody thinks that, you know, they're all $100,000 and that's the great thing about the three is it's brought this technology available almost to the masses. I wouldn't say to the masses, but um, it is way more affordable than people assume. If anything, is there something about the Tesla Model 3 that does annoy you a little bit? Other than the charging stations being a little um, difficult to deal with in smaller cities, um, it has had a couple of computer glitches where you're in a situation where suddenly you get um, some kind of glitch in the screen or it's not responding to you. It's not happened very often, I'd say maybe four times. And I, you know, at first I panicked, but then I just learned to do a restart and it, it solves it really quick. That's the only thing I can really think of. One to a hundred, what would you say your customer satisfaction with it would be? Uh, 110. <laughs> I love this car. I love it. Awesome. I want to get another one. Awesome. That was uh, my next question. Do you foresee yourself buying another electric vehicle? And if so, what kind? Uh, definitely a Tesla. I'm brand um, loyal at this point. I, I just love it. I would like to get a Cybertruck for my husband. I think he would love that. Um, I would like all my family members to have threes. Um, you know, I'm not going to buy my kids cars, but um, if I was, I, that's what I would I'd lean for. When we built this garage, we put uh, charging um, at capabilities at the bay doors so that we could bring more electric vehicles in here. Wow, that's thinking ahead. Yeah. Do you have a Cybertruck on order yet? Um, I did put the Cybertruck on order. Awesome. They're a very polarizing design. A lot of people think mm -hmm. they're ugly and a lot of people think they're absolutely cool. Right. Um, I'm in the latter camp. I also have one reserved. Do you good? Very excited. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, they are goofy looking, but that's part of the fun, I think. If you were someone that was considering buying a Tesla, mm -hmm. someone that kind of knows they want to buy an EV next mm -hmm. and it's probably going to be a Tesla, what practical, useful life advice would you give them sure. for the process of getting an EV into their life? Well, we, um, my husband was a little hesitant um, because I had a great hybrid um, Lexus that I was driving and um, we had a friend bring, bring a three over. And he said, why don't you all take a drive? He let all of us drive it. And that sold it. I'd say go drive one and see for yourself how, um, you know, the learning curve isn't as steep as people like to make it out to be. How fun, how comfortable, how safe. Um, that's what I would say, go drive one and you will be sold. We were, weren't planning on spending the money on one for a couple of years. We were kind of, it was a goal, you know, that we had down the road. But once we drove one and we saw the benefits, we went the next weekend and got one. Next weekend. Yep. <laughs> we went Can't the next weekend and got one. Did not make it up. We went right wow. away. And actually the guy who uh, who let us drive, he's still a really good friend and um, helping him sell his house right now. And uh, we just, we I mean, half the meetings we have, we just geek out on Teslas and what's going on with EV motors. So you are a top producer for Crylight here That's in correct. Tennessee. Yep. I'm real proud of that. Awesome. Congratulations on your trophy for that. How does this car work into your life as a realtor? Mm -hmm. Every day I use this car and um, we drive everywhere. Uh, all over from Ashland City to south of Murfreesboro, Estill Springs, out to Lebanon, up to Clarksville, wherever we need to go, I go and I very rarely have to stop at a supercharger. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm pretty good about mapping. Um, I have a, an app that helps me map all the stops that we might make for um, showings. Um, but I do, I have stopped a few times in Manchester. Once in a while, I'll stop at 24 and, and Thompson Lane and charge there. Very rarely a Brentwood, but most of the time I just charge up in the morning and I'm good to go for the whole day. Wow. When you do have to make a charging stop, about how long do you charge? Um, well, at first I thought I had to charge till it was full, but then I learned the trick of, of just keeping it, um, you know, 
halfway there, basically. And um, so not long, enough to walk up and get uh, a coffee or, uh, you know, stop at the Panera or whatever. Just, just uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes is all I need. Wonderful. And I'm going to throw this in here now. If you are an EV owner here mm -hmm. in Tennessee or um, an EV fan, someone who's interested in perhaps switching over to that, you'll definitely want to work with a realtor that knows about EVs because 10 years from now we won't have gas cars mm -hmm. and the infrastructure of having an EV in a house or being able to get it into a house mm -hmm. is going to be very important. Yep. A lot of Tesla owners invest in or trade the company's stock. Do you <laughs> hold any Tesla shares yourself? Yes, <laughs> yes, um, definitely. And um, my husband and I, um, he tends to be one of those looking constantly every day and I'm like, just wait, just wait, just wait. And of course, you know, I think it's something up like 300% since we bought it or something crazy like that. Fantastic. Yeah. Three X returns. Yeah. That's uncommon. Yeah. 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 We got in low. Yeah. So yeah. Buy low, sell high, right? Mm, well, not sell. <laughs> yeah. How long do you plan to hold? I don't know. I mean, until we need it, I guess. I feel the same way. Yeah. My wife and I are long term investors mm -hmm. on Tesla as well. Thank you so much for your time no today, problem. Michelle. Any final thoughts for people that don't have an EV in their life yet and are considering it watching these videos? They are not much more uh, expensive than a, a, a luxury um, Toyota or any of those cars. Just give it a chance. It is not um, gonna be that much different from you. Go test drive. Once you test drive, you will be sold, I promise. Thank you so much, Michelle. No problem, it's great to meet you. Same.